Hey guys, well today's the day. If you notice this car has been in a few other videos. This is an 86 Dodge 600 convertible with a fuel injected 2.2 liter engine and three speed automatic. Uh, like I said, if you've seen this car in other videos, you've noticed that it's only been running sporadically and when it was running, it wasn't running well. It's got some kind of problem. I don't know what yet. Uh, it's lost compression on three and four, and that's three and that's four. So, either probably got a head gasket issue, or maybe a valve issue, or maybe something worse. So, anyway, what I got to do is I got to get the head off this thing. So, that's what I'm going to start doing today. Uh, these aren't real hard to do. I've never taken the head off of one of these. As you can see, that's just that's it where it bolts down right there. So it's got a timing belt. It's got to come off. It's got the tensioner on down in there, and then uh, just different uh, different things unbolted wires, and you can see there. And the, Usually on one of these, you just use you leave the intake and the exhaust manifolds bolted to the head. And there's no real reason to take it off in the car unless you just don't want to uh, take the exhaust loose. But I'll just tell you that's that's the hard way to do it because uh, you got a lot of bolts that hold these things on the on the cylinder head and reaching around in there. That's not fun. So I would suggest just take the take the exhaust off of it down underneath. That's what I've got it jacked up to do. And so I get on with that. I don't know how many of these steps I'm going to uh, document, but I'll try to hit the highlights of it. But this car, this car has got to run. Uh, there's no place for non-running cars here anymore. This one, this one runs. That one runs. That one runs. So they all run. Anyway. Go ahead and while I've got the camera running, we'll crawl under this and take a look and see what we gotta deal with as far as exhaust goes. This exhaust has already been worked on before it's had a leak in it and I see where it's at. It's right right there. I don't know what's up with that. Looks like the converter's been cut open right there too. That does that doesn't surprise me. So yeah, it's I'm in too good a shape. I see where the. Uh, let's see here. There's one of the. Let me see if I can orient myself here. I'm gonna look at there it is. Yeah, right there. That's one of the manifold connections, and then it's probably got one. Excuse me. I don't mean to sniff again. I'm still. There's the other one. That was my keys falling. There's the other one right there. I'm gonna try to just go ahead and unbolt that with those. Get those two off there. As you can see what I'm saying, it's a lot easier just to undo that than it is to try to get all those different bolts and things out of the head up there from behind. It's just no point in it, really. So, it shouldn't be a problem as long as they're not seized up in the head. This should be fairly easy. All right. Well, let me just set the camera off and oh yeah I was talking about sniffing there try not to sniff but I got over my cold but I've been out mowing the grass today and oh man just killing me all right well okay let me get on with this first things first take the exhaust off and see where we're at Okay, a little further along with it, show you what we're doing. Essentially what you want to do is you want to take everything off that attaches to the head, like wires and lines and things like that. So, we've got all the spark plug wires off. Um, up here we've got a, got a temperature sender right there you have to disconnect. you got one over on this side of the water box you got to disconnect. <clears throat> over here on the end of the head, there's two grounds. One here, one here that has to be disconnected. Uh, you got this little, this is like a, 
uh, well, I guess some sort of an emissions solenoid, EGR solenoid. Uh, it's got to come off. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to come off, but I got I did take it off to get some room. So um, just took off the linkage that goes to the throttle body. It's got two bolts on it right there. You'll see it holds that on. Took off the PCV breather thing there. Um, because still got a heater line right here to take off. <clears throat> yeah, and I still have to loosen the timing belt and get it off. Just over here, took off all the wiring. Uh, we've got a connector uh, over here. Got one here. You got one there that's for your injectors, and you got one down there for your throttle position sensor. Your two fuel lines here, instead of just regular lines with fuel injection clamps. Uh, where's one? There's one right there. And they are different sizes, so you don't have to worry about trying to remember where it goes where. Uh, another vacuum line there. And uh, let's see, anything else worth mentioning? Yeah, drain the coolant. And on these cars, these engines, I mean, uh, the easiest way to do it to get it thoroughly drained is take off the lower hose. I hope you can see that down there. It just goes into the the water box down in, at the water pump down there. Just pull it off. It's the easiest way to do it. Just drains it all the way. <clears throat> and the upper hose off here. I want to say something about this hose. You ever wonder how bad hoses can get without you knowing them? about it you can see in there it's how gnarly that hose is inside it's just wearing the wire right there it hadn't blown but it was it's soft right here where that's happening it's soft you can feel it so it was not far not far away from it so that hose is gone piece of shit so, anyway, back on this and ready to get this head off here. I got one bolt out of the exhaust back there and one that's still kind of tight. So I soaked it with coil. So hopefully that'll free up here and I don't have to do anything harsh. <laughs> I'm going to show you something real quick. I don't have good feelings about Well, right on cue. There it goes. That dude's addicted to the damn weed eater. Anyway, I don't have He did it last year. He does it this year I don't have too good a feelings about this engine because I was looking at this camshaft this camshaft is getting worn out and I'll show you how you can tell I saw something here I didn't like too well. Hopefully it'll focus in but You see that That's where the hardening of the camshaft journal this the lobe is coming apart starting to disintegrate you see it yeah that's usually from any combination of things it may be oil starvation it may be uh, bad just not changing the oil maybe it's just be a lot of miles you know who knows but the rest of them I don't see it on any of the other ones but they don't look great there's some kind of a little bit of wear on them for sure so <clears throat> excuse me this is not a this is not a roller cam head either which means it does not have roller followers this has got flat flat followers in there something like that as you see there they just ride directly on the so it may you know it may run thousands of miles and not have any problems but I don't like that I don't know what I'll do there, but oh, and by the way, this is something for all these people that like to bitch and moan about. Say, oh, buy an American car, buy, keep your jobs here in the U.S. This is what's stamped on the head. Made in Mexico. There you go, pal. Buy American, keep the jobs here. You're right. I'm sure they flew Americans down there to build this head and then flew them back home, huh? Nope. There 
is. So that's what we're gonna do with it here. Is just get that head on off and see what we got in there. Be back in a minute. Hey everybody. Well, the head's off. So let's do a little uh, post-mortem. Um, I tell you, I've already looked at everything over, and I found two problems here. One I was kind of halfway expecting, and the other I was not. First off, you look in here, hope you can see. See this little, is that rust right here in this first cylinder? Let me get my hand on it right in here. Right there. Hang on. Sorry about that. This, there we go. Well, that's what that is. That's mostly cosmetic, but it just has a blown head gasket. And if you look, you see, this is very common on these engines. You see how it's kind of bulged out right here? And it's also bulged out right here. Looks like it's not, you know, it's not matched. It's not perfectly round. It looks like also somebody has gunked it up with some stop leak. See, I just kind of peeled that off right there. So, I didn't actually expect it to have a blown head gasket. But it is. You do. So, we're looking right there. But the good news is, the cylinders look pretty good. That's just a little cosmetic rust. That's, that's no problem. Um, there's no real wear on the cylinders. Pistons look good. Uh, this head gasket looked kind of rough over here too, so it was probably not too far behind there. But like I said, though, that's not totally unexpected on one of these. But it did find something really didn't expect, and I'll show you when we get over here. To the head. Uh, now, look on this. This is the number one cylinder. This is the one I was just showed you. Look how you see you got these little. Looks like stalactites here. Funky looking stuff. Weed eater man had to stop and smoke a cigarette. So it was definitely getting cooling in there. I didn't notice it steaming or anything, so that's a little bit of a surprise, but it was uh, right there. Right there's where it was. Right there's where she was leaking. Over here, it's probably leaking there too. So, but anyway, I got going across looking over here, and I didn't catch this at first. But look right here. You see that? You see that little pie-shaped little chunk out of the valve there? Well, that is a classic example of a burnt valve. Um, so that's the reason why the compression was down nearly to nothing on that cylinder. And this one, this one over here, it's not great either. So I don't know if it's got some valve seal. Now this this valve's not burnt. It doesn't look like it is. Now this they're open because the cam's holding them open. If you're wondering why that is, but usually what you wonder what causes these to happen. Um, this engine probably got overheated and you know exhaust valves run very very hot anyway and they depend on being on the whenever whenever the valve closes like an exhaust valve closes down to the seat like this one is and that one, this one here is they transfer heat to the head and then of course that in turn transfers it to the coolant that's how the engine stays cool and doesn't just destroy itself so what happened was somehow it got hot enough in the cylinder that it started you know, maybe the seats is kind of wearing on this and it was leaking a little bit, leaking a little bit of combustion gases out past the valve. Oh, hell, there he goes. So, it just kind of cut a chunk out of it. So, that's what happened to it. Um, I'm just going to have to put a head on it. Because you, you can really buy a remanufactured head as cheap as you can buy the services to 
the valve job, which it'll have to have one. If it had one valve go bad on it, you know, it'll have to have a valve job, not a new valve and all that. So probably just gonna be looking in to buy another head for it. But that's what was wrong with it. I'm just looking at this valve here. I don't know. Huh. Tempted to take the valves out of it. Look at the valve seats. But yeah. How about that? Huh. Well, that valve's that valve's a little loose and it's guide anyway. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it, how much that's moving. You're not supposed to be able to move one that much. Yeah, this head is worn out. Um, probably looking at a head on it. Well, everybody, I'm pooped. I think I'm going to pull this gasket off and clean this engine block up some. And I always having a coughing fit now. So, clean this engine block up and oil the cylinders down and see what I'm going to do. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.